um, University. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I must say I'm in, going to enjoy getting involved in this debate, having listened today to many of the remarks that have been provided by um, my colleagues. I've listened particularly with intent to what the Liberal members have been saying and what their underlying argument is for this legislation. And the case they have been making in the House is this, that this legislation will lower usage, make it possible to make it safer, and uh, actually provide more protection for young people, for people who are uh, abusing, misusing, getting involved in the marijuana drug scene. So having listened to that, I have specifically tailored my remarks to deal with it. In particular, looking at the jurisdictions throughout the world, Uruguay, Washington State, and particularly Colorado, who have legalized this. And I find it interesting they've made these arguments about it's becoming safer, it will be safer with this legislation, less usage, and we'll be able to bring the usage rates of, of young people uh, down. Now, interestingly, I will say this. When I'm out in the general public and um, people talk to me who want to see this legislation go through, they never talk about increased safety. What they argue for is I want to be able to use my joint recreationally without any hassle. So the push from the general public, the push from the people behind the scenes, is somewhat different than the argument that the government is making today. And so I will deal with the argument that the government is dealing with today. The argument that I want to have my fun and I don't care about the consequences is not one that I'm prepared to deal with today. I think there's a basic argument to dealing with that on its own. But this argument I will deal with today is with the facts. And I will be using, in particular, a couple of um, studies. First of all, one that I would like to uh, refer to is one that uh, was sponsored by um, France's National Institute for Health Security and Justice Studies. And they hired a psychiatry professor at the University of Pittsburgh, a Dr. Erica Forbes, to uh, look into marijuana usage around the world. Since the argument that the government is making that if you legalize marijuana, you will in fact have less usage. Okay. We have very few jurisdictions around the world that have gone for complete legalization, but we have three. Uruguay, Washington, and Colorado. And what has been noted in all of those jurisdictions? In each and every one of those three jurisdictions, usage rates actually went up. Now, in Washington and Colorado, the study says usage rates didn't move up uniformly in all age brackets and all um, demographics. They tended to move up more among adults than among young people. In Uruguay, they found complete, above the, uh, across the board, increased usage of um, marijuana by every, every age cohort that uh, was measured, the whole, the whole spectrum. So this is what we have. With what the Liberals are experimenting with in Canada, the experiment has been done in three jurisdictions. And in each of these three times, from my perspective, not surprisingly, what we have ended up with is higher usage rates of marijuana. So, Madam Speaker, that is what I am anticipating uh, as we go forward. If we legalize like these other jurisdictions do, Canadians should not be surprised if we have higher usage rates. Now, do I believe that that will vary across the country? Absolutely, Madam Speaker. Because the way the situation is now in Canada, if you read police reports, if you study anything about arrest rates and charge rates, the usage rates in the Canadian public and the rates at which police charge and prosecutors prosecute vary dramatically across the country. Interestingly enough, according to one study I read, the place in the country with the lowest use among major cities was Saskatoon, where the police are also most likely to charge you, the most aggressive enforcement. Vancouver and Halifax were at the other end of the spectrum, both for youth, but both for usage and also for charge rates. Now, there's different things that may be at play, but I think the government needs to think about this. Where the law is more strictly enforced in Canada, it is less likely to be used. That would fit with the information that we get from the Uruguay, Washington, Colorado studies. So I'd urge the government to look at this because the very practical reality is in some places in Canada, it is almost legalized now. That is how slack the usage rate uh, would be. Another thing that was noted in particular in this study paid for by the French, French Institute for uh, Health Security 
was that uh, marijuana poisonings have gone up in all of these jurisdictions. And that's not something that I think any Canadian politician wants to see to have happen. That is across the board uh, a problem. Interestingly, as I was getting ready for this, I found a report produced in October of this year on the situation in, in Colorado since they um, legalized it. So this is very fresh data, a report that was produced literally a, a few, few weeks ago. Um, and for any members who are interested, I'm going to try to have this posted on my website or on my Facebook in the next uh, few days or so, uh, Monday or Tuesday of next week. And this study pointed out that Colorado in 2006 was number 14th among young people for usage of marijuana in the whole United States of America, of all the states. Guess what? In 2015, it was number one. So they went from some place above average to high to being the place that's most used in the whole country. In fact, Colorado currently has 55% higher than the national average marijuana cannabis usage among, among uh, young people. Guess what? They found the same thing among uh, adults. Um, Colorado has about 124% higher usage rate of marijuana in general than the national average across the United States. So you may be thinking, people may be watching and thinking, I'm not going to use marijuana. This isn't going to cause me a problem. This isn't a stress for me. You know, my kids won't use it. I hope I won't use it. But start to, to uh, look at these statistics. Again, marijuana-related traffic deaths when a driver was positive for marijuana doubled in 2013 from 55 deaths to 125 deaths in 2016. Uh, marijuana traffic-related deaths, all traffic-related deaths dealing with marijuana, increased 66% in the four-year average, 13 to 16, since Colorado legalized. During the same period, all traffic deaths only increased 16%. So when you basically start to take out the marijuana traffic deaths, roadway is as safe or getting safer, but marijuana is making it more dangerous to drive in, um, in the state of Colorado. Youth, youth usage has gone up in Colorado. And Colorado was a high usage state already. So we're not comparing some place where there was almost no marijuana going up. Colorado was in the top quarter, third of, of U.S. usage among, uh, among youth, and it continued to go up after the legalization. College, college age use, again, increased 16 percent. College age students, number two in the United States usage in, in, in Colorado, up from number eighth position in 2005 and 2006. Um, emergency department and hospitalization marijuana admissions up from around 6,300 in 2011, 6,700 in 2012, over 11,400 in 2014 and on track in 2015 to blow past that number. So in literally every measure you start to look at, Colorado's health system is getting worse, its driving situation for safety is getting worse, usage by young people is getting worse, and usage by um, adults, the entire population, is getting uh, worse. Um, the government has also said, why not try something like tobacco, uh, the dealing with we did with tobacco? Madam Speaker, passing this legislation isn't that. In fact, we could do the same things about making marijuana more socially unacceptable, pushing marijuana back on other, uh, in, in other ways, in the same way that governments have on tobacco over the years. We can do that right now. We do not have to legalize to go in that direction. In fact, if the government went that direction, dropped this bill and went that direction, I think they would find widespread um, public support. Uh, marijuana exposures have gone up. Uh, they still have criminal issues. There's still all sorts of those problems going on in, in Colorado. And as I get close to closing my speech, I want to point, point to two final things. The other week I was at a family funeral in uh, Saskatchewan. My uncle had passed away. And I was visiting with uh, a relative who's a member of the Edmonton City Police Force. I asked him, how many Edmonton City Police officers want to have legalized marijuana? He said, us guys on the streets, absolutely none. That tells you what the people on the front lines are thinking. 
finally, I want to say this one thing. If we are going to deal with drug problems in Canada, we have to deal with it in a broad-based culture, not just here in the Parliament, but across the country. It's something we need to do, not just now, but uh, in perpetuity. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I see that my time has uh, elapsed. Questions and comments?